with the conservative group Young Voices commentator Francis Floresca. I get to meet Francis today. You know, before we talk about what the Democrat National Committee is doing and, and trying to make sure that uh, they get the nomination for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, and you know they're dealing with Ohio wanting to print their ballots and do- drop dead date, all that stuff we, we talked about before. I want to ask you uh, what you hear is the vice presidential pick for for Donald Trump, and I haven't heard much on that of late. And you know, you know conventions just a few weeks away, and you figure by now maybe the the campaign be a little stronger if you get that news out there. Any word? Any any scuttlebutt on who the VP might be for Trump? I mean, I hear a few names here and there, but you know, nothing's official until the Trump administration. That, I mean, not Trump administration. Trump himself says that he's choosing a specific nominee. I've heard, I've heard from people that it's it's going to be Vivek Ramaswamy. Yeah. I've heard from people it's going to be Senator Tom Cotton, and who not, it might be Senator Tim Scott. You don't know. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Maybe he'll choose the nominee at, at his his running mate at convention. Is this you think just another political casualty? You know, compromising the trips for Donald Trump to do more rallies, compromising maybe some fundraising efforts, which don't seem to be hurting of late for Donald Trump. But then because he's so distracted with this court case up in New York, do you think maybe this is another one of those political casualties as a result of that court case that maybe by now we should have had, should have heard about a pig, but you know, they're distracted. Trump is distracted. His team is distracted because of of this uh, political case against him up in New York. Mm -hmm. Well, the, there's a lot going on with Trump with Trump right now with his case. But also, I mean, there's always a lot to do before convention. And I know Trump probably wants to try to play to the middle ground voters as much as possible. We know he tried to play that hand um, with the libertarians as well. Uh-huh. But um, who knows what, what Trump's going to do? I mean, but, you know, Trump can only do so much. I mean, he's already pretty versatile as he is. Yeah. But at the same time... Um, the case up in New York is going to be pretty much what's going on right now, but hopefully he'll choose someone who he'll choose someone soon, whether that's during convention or before convention. Uh, of late, uh, Joe Biden has been trying to round up individuals who he should take normally for granted, like the Democrats do every four years, <laughs> the black vote in this country. Uh, he's having to shore up those numbers because polling data is showing that uh, blacks are waking up, many of them, not all of them. But many of them are now waking up. And that 90, 91 percent black vote that he got you know, four years ago, that might not be there for Joe Biden. That might be maybe 20 points off, maybe more by Election Day. And he's out there doing rallies, talking to some of the black voters of late. Want to get your thoughts on how Donald Trump is making, you know, if you believe the polling data, Donald Trump is making huge inroads in the black vote. Latino vote, which I can attest to down here uh, in South Texas, uh, Donald Trump is is gaining steam at the moment, despite all the negative headlines. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, first of all, I say uh, polls don't vote; people do. So yep. we'll see what happens on That's election. That's true. But there has definitely been a shift in how we see minorities, and me as a minority, um, I just see a lot of a huge shift in how um, people are wanting to vote. People are tired of inflation. People are tired of certain policies that the Biden administration has enacted to make their lives a lot more difficult. So, um, so many people are shifting over to vote for, likely vote for Donald Trump or they're still somewhere in the middle, but they said, I hear people saying they're for sure not voting for Biden. I want to get uh, your opinion real quick on just one final thing. My, my friend Brian Kilmeade in his national show <clears throat> has been asking this of several folks that he speaks with, because you'd think that with the polling data on Latinos, the polling data on blacks, and other demographics that are moving toward Trump um, in a strong way, and yet you've got these other polls, these national polls that say it's a close race. It's like even Stephen. (laughs) It's like 50-50. I know Trump might be ahead, according to polling data, in swing states, But national polls say that, like, by 1.2 points, he's ahead of Joe Biden. And it shouldn't even be this close. How how do you have polling data in one end showing strong, stronger support from blacks and Hispanics and students and and all these people and and then have a 50-50 poll on the other end? Why is that? 
I mean, who are they polling? That's my first question, because it really depends who you're polling here when it comes to figuring out um, who's going to be supporting Trump and who's supporting Biden. But um, again, a lot of it's a game. A lot of them, both candidates have to play the game on the ground to make sure that they're able um, to win the votes that they need. And, you know, Trump is actually out there trying, actively trying to win the votes of moderates, libertarians, and other people. Yes. Meanwhile, Biden's just, you know, sitting there as president houseplant and trying to figure out what he's doing next. And, oh, my, that that guy, he is struggling right now to even act as president. So hopefully we have that kind of change soon. Hey, you think? Joe Biden's going to be on the ballot in November. I don't think so. I don't. I think they're. Going to, I think they're going to change something in the convention. I'm just. I'm waiting for it. You really think Joe Biden's going to be there on the ballot in November? I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, the the Democrats are already trying to push up the official nomination to right. before the in Ohio. Ohio deadline because of that situation. Because of that crazy. situation, because Ohio needs to have um, um have their official certification ninety days before um, the election and the Democrats are just trying to figure out, oh, we're scrambling right now to figure out what to do so they could, in quote, officially nominate Biden and, and Kamala Harris. Yeah. But, you know, you never know what's going to happen. They, they could probably switch things around. I mean, the Democrats are known for doing that. But with what's happening in Ohio, it's not the first time. But this is the first I feel like this is the first time we're really paying attention to what is happening um, when it comes to elections, because we don't want to have um, a lot of the same issues as last time. Francis, uh, Francis, thank you. It's a pleasure meeting you online. Francis Foresca with Young Voices. Thank you much.